In this exciting installment of Chapter 10's coverage of gases, I'll teach you about the ideal gas law, how to do about a million examples of calculations using it, and then a bunch of other crazy crap afterwards. I recently drove by a store called Dress Barn. I think it's a really weird name for a store. I don't know why I would go buy a dress at a barn. To me, the name is kind of like calling your store Shoe Carnival. Oh, wait, that's a real store. Or Apparel Circus. Or clothing dumpster. Like, why would you ever buy shoes or apparel at clothing at any of those places? Anyway, let's go ahead and get to it. Before starting, I wanted to provide you with a link here to a cool video that shows how temperature and volume interrelate for ideal gases. After you watch this video, I want to ask you the question, just to provide some food for thought. <clears throat> when the balloons are immersed in liquid nitrogen, they shrink. Why? And then, why do the balloons expand when they warm up? After today's presentation, which will cover sections four through six, you should be able to perform calculations using the ideal gas law, calculate a gas's density and molar mass by using equation 1010 from our book, use Dalton's law of partial pressures to calculate individual gases' partial pressures and a system's total pressure, and calculate partial pressures using mole flow. <laughs> and calculate partial pressures using mole fractions. Note that we will skip sections seven through nine from our text. So let's get started. The following equation right here is known as the ideal gas law, where P is a gas's pressure, V is its volume, N is the number of moles of the gas, and R is something called the ideal gas constant, and T is the gas's temperature. This equation can be used to interconvert between any ideal gas's pressure, volume, and temperature. So what is the ideal gas constant? Well, that actually depends on what units you're using. So here's a table that shows various common forms of the ideal gas constant using different units. So you want to make sure that you select the ideal gas constant that you use based on the units that you've been given and the units you want to get to. The most commonly used ideal gas constants are the first two listed in this table. I ended up using the first one so much in high school chemistry that to this day I still have it memorized. That takes us to some awesome ideal gas law problems. I want you to calculate the following quantities for an ideal gas. Its volume in liters if 1.5 moles has a pressure of 1.25 atmospheres at a temperature of negative 6 degrees Celsius. Then the absolute temperature of the gas at which 3.33 times 10 to the negative third moles occupies 478 milliliters at 750 torr. Separately, the Goodyear blimps, which frequently fly over sporting events in the United States, hold approximately 175,000 cubic feet of helium. If the gas inside one of those blimps is at 23 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure, what mass of helium is in the blimp? In this problem, I ask you to use the ideal gas law to calculate the volume of one mole of an ideal gas at STP. And this one, Calculate the number of molecules in a deep breath of air whose volume is 2.25 liters at body temperature and pressure is 735 torr. In this question, a scuba diver's tank contains 0.29 kilograms of O2 compressed into a volume of 2.3 liters. Calculate the gas pressure inside the tank at 9 degrees C and what volume would this oxygen occupy at 26 degrees C and 0.95 atmospheres? And this problem. Calcium hydride reacts with water to form hydrogen gas according to this equation. This chemical reaction, incidentally, is sometimes used to inflate life rafts, weather balloons, and other things when a simple compact means of generating H2 is needed. How many grams of calcium hydride are needed to generate 145 liters of hydrogen gas if the pressure of hydrogen gas is 825 torr at 25 degrees Celsius? That takes us to the end of this set of problems and this lecture. I hope that you're able to have an enjoyable experience buying your shoes, apparel, and dresses at barns, carnivals, circuses, and dumpsters. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.